mostly here. Good. All right. So we're here. All right, mostly here. So we're gonna we're gonna advance for more for the presentation today. Um, we're gonna go a little bit quicker. This is a sandwich. <laughs> it's a metaphor. Okay. It's a metaphor. All right. It's a metaphor for how much you understood about design before you started here. All right. Design is simple. It's just two pieces of bread with some stuff in the middle, and it's wonderful. All right. So just remember this. This is a sandwich. We keep it in your mind because we did this. Remember this. You did the cleaning project. Little did you know that you were actually talking about spaces, circulation, bodies moving through space, changes in elevation. It was all these things wrapped up in this project that you were focused on that maybe you didn't realize you were focused on again. And again, how do we apply that knowledge to what we're doing today? Because this is something that's um, that differentiates experts from novices. Experts make connections between things. Novices put all of the information that they have into separate categories and they don't link them. So that's what we're doing today with you. So you did this, right? And you loved it. But then you did this, right? It's a tile project. But now looking back at it, you realize that you were talking about positive and negative space. You're talking about balance. You're talking about even maybe how to extrude these spaces, how to create space from a, from a two-dimensional plan, how to transform something from one thing into the next, and how to do that multiple times. You're actually being a big word called iterative. How many of you have heard that word before? How many of you have secretly not known what we were talking about when we said iterative? It's OK. Iterative means over and over and over. And did you do this project over and over and over again? You did. And you changed the we tweaked just little things, but then you did it again. So you're actually doing design thinking. You're thinking like designers. And then you did this. You just did this. This was for my section, so it's crazy. Um, and it's, it's crazy because we all looked at this from a different perspective, but when you did this model, you were actually taking something that was not architecture, it wasn't design, it was text. You know, we could argue that it is architecture and it is design, but you were taking it and you were transforming it into something else. And today, you explain very succinctly why you did things for really good reasons, other than because I like it. Question. How many of you want to date somebody for the only reason is they all think you're cool? Or do you want somebody who is interested in you, who has good reasons for dating you? I don't know. Maybe we'll talk about that later, because <laughs> when you're doing this, little did you know you were also talking about the additive space, you were talking about subtractive space, you were doing all this sort of design thinking. You were thinking about her, you know, lots of stuff. This is a sandwich. <laughs> this is Chicago. Right, when you were in Chicago, we were actually, as your professors, we were trying to point everything out to you. We were trying to explain really good design. We were trying to show you proportion and scale and surfaces and materials and how do people walk through and how do you diagram these things. We were trying to show you really good sandwiches, how they're put together, how, does, how do spaces, if spaces were sitting, remember it's metaphor. How do these things fit together? What makes them good? And they're not all alike. They're not all peanut butter and jelly. They're different, but yet they're really good, and they share some common characteristics. None of these are not a sandwich, right? None of these are pretending to be a sandwich. Good, good design can't pretend to be anything but good design. A bad design can't pretend to be good design. And so we were out there, we were showing it to you. So now you understand that this is design. This is actually what you're doing. It's like a scooby doo sandwich. It's like a bad boy. All right? It's like Shaggy. This is why he has power over the Now, all of these things. So but the nice thing is, all of the projects that we've been doing, we've been chunking this up for you. Remember about pain? We were just think, talking about a little bit of stuff. When we were talking about the invisible cities, we were just talking about a little bit of stuff, maybe just the baloney. All right, but this, this is your opportunity, this next project is your opportunity to actually make a sandwich like this. All right, it's time to bring everything together into one big project. 
the beginning of the semester you saw this. These are all the things that you're going to be able to do at the end of the semester. Right? That's pretty good. Course objectives. Upon completion of this course, or these courses, because this is 162 as well, I mean 161, at minimum you will be expected to demonstrate skills or understanding in, and when I read this, I want you to reflect and think how are you doing in these things, all right? Because these are the things that we're trying to teach you, and you're probably about almost at skinny break there. All right, one, how to be a design student. Time slash task management. What have you learned about time management? That you're bad at it, good, you are. That's because you haven't done it a lot. All right, keep going, sorry. Um, learning and functioning in a studio environment. How many of you have been in a studio before you were here? Good. So how many times was this your first studio environment? Good. So you're learning how this is completely different than your high school English class. Maybe. Maybe you were doing cool stuff, like reading Italian novels. In English. All right, working independently and as a team member. Check two, the fundamental tools and processes of design, spatial organizations and relationships, analytical tools and ordering principles. How are you doing on that? Good. Have you read your chain books? Read you know. your chain books. It's all there. All right, three, effective use of basic communication methods and the tools used in their making, diagrams. Drawing, lettering, model making, speaking, and writing. All of this is going to be in the next project. The investigations and processes that lead to the formation of design concepts, their realization as objects, plans, and places. Basic critical thinking and a foundation of literacy in design and environmental design. Sorry, I left the word out there. The relationships of the environmental design and planning professions to each other, the roles, contributions, and responsibilities of the profession to society and to environmental health, and last eight, the ability to apply the fundamentals of both natural and formal ordering systems and the capacity of each to inform two and three dimensional designs. All right, so there, that's what you are learning to do this semester. At this point, we've been doing it, and now we're going to put them all together. So it's this idea of design in concept. So this is your final. Project, Cat 101, Unit 5, Design and Content, the White River Walk. Now, the other thing is, remember that big sandwich? <coughs> We're still not going to make you do it all at once. We're still going to divide it into parts so it's easier to process and understand. A big, a big component of this project is there's going to be three phases, and each phase is going to lead you to design decisions about the next phase. All right? So really, and we'll explain this a little bit, but I just wanted to lay that out. You're going to have these phases, but they're going to work into each other. All right? So it's not going to be building an apple and then making an orange. Everything is really well thought out and connected in these projects. Also, this idea that we're going to design in context. Remember those photos I was showing you in the beginning? Would that work? In New York City, the designs that I showed you. Let's go back. Would this work in New York City? No, why not? This, oh, the skyline, the different skyline, yeah. Paris has capped their skyline at a certain point so that there's only a few objects that are higher. Good, why else? Why wouldn't this not work? Yes? Too crowded. Too crowded, good. What else? Is there Michael Tower? No. So this is 100% about designing. Well, not yet, but you can steal it. No. <laughs> so it's this idea that we're going to be designing in context. And this is what makes design a lot different from other professions, is every single design that you do is going to be different because of the context. And so we're giving you that opportunity to practice that now. All right, sandwiches. Sorry, go back to sandwiches. All right, so we're going to be talking about the White River Walk. All right, now I need to switch from PowerPoint to Word, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. Please jump in. If I look like I'm floundering, this is simple. To help me undrown you, we'll be okay. Yeah. So a little bit about what you're going to be doing. This is what the final product could look like. What do you see?
Have you seen one of these before? Looks like don't. It's in Dutch, but you understand it. You can understand it. Where is the point of interest? The big star. Good. We don't even know what that is. Bayernstadt Scheidam. Maybe you call it stadium. I don't know what it is, but we can see what it is. All right. What's leading to it? Multiple things, but what do they look like based on this, just this image that you're looking at and you've never seen this before? Paths, good. So is one more important than the other? One is how do you know? It's thicker, good. All right. So now where is a secondary node, or I mean a secondary point of interest? The little stars, but where are they? They both are by something. Actually, they're both by two somethings. Look at colors. What are they by? Green. Okay, what does green usually mean? Grass. And if this is a city scale, what does it mean? Park, good. All right, so we can look at these and we can immediately tell that they're probably by some sort of open space. We really don't need to know that. All right, what are the big green arrows for? What do you think? Wind, maybe. What else? What do you think? Circulation. It could be circulation. It looks like it's ending. What's the big blue thing, do you think? Hmm? There's two big blue things. Which one am I talking about, Dr. Merrill? The, the big one at the bottom. Probably a river. Good. What's the other one? Probably. Probably a what? Did somebody say canal? Good. Or what? A ditch? It could be a ditch. We don't know, but it looks like it's an associated form. But what's interesting about this is that this has everything that we've talked about in terms of lynching analysis. Remember that? So where are the edges? Well, the river is an edge. Where are the nodes? I should ask that. What is the symbol for node on this map? The circle, good. How do you know? How do you know it's a node? Because it has stars upon bars? No. Again, how do you know it's a node? Nobody's told me yet. Repetition, good. So I see it in multiple places. It looks like the nodes are also connected by something, probably by circulation. And then they're being intersected by something else. And so there we have the idea of a node. It's an intersection of two different systems or two different flows within this. All right, good. So you understood that. So today, these are the styles of graphics that you're going to be creating. All right, so nothing more, nothing less than quick sketches on a map of what you see and how you interpret what you see. All right? Oh, but what about things that you can't see? Like wind, or smells, or what are some of the things that you can't see that you're going to want to take note of down along the river? I have three examples of it on the bottom. Noise from the street, very good. That's one. What else? That you can't see, yes. Wait, wait, say what? Okay. Argue how you how you would um, experience topography in a way other than your sight. Hmm? Yeah, by falling down the river. Good. Okay. That's one way of experiencing it. And also that, that sense of descending, right? Okay. All right. Anything else? I mean, one more. What's something else that you won't see that you're going to make notes of? Wildlife, okay, so the sounds of wildlife, or traces of, well, now you can see traces, or scents, okay. All right, I'll buy that for those three. All right, again, here is another example. What do you see? This one has notation on it in English. How does that work? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Is it superfluous to have text? The real question is, based on this, what are you going to draw? So you need to take something from this, like the way that some of the line weight, some of the symbols. Do you see what, what the existing buildings look like? They're black. Good. All right, they're filled in. So you are already starting to talk a little bit about the, the positive and negative space 
of this site. All right, what else do you see that you're going to steal? This is all for you just to steal from. <laughs> Different viewpoints from your site. Okay, good. The different viewpoints from the site. That's going to be important. When you're there on the site, you're going to be looking at the river. Is there a nice long view down the river to see something from far away? Is it really choppy that you don't get to see? Are there important buildings that actually need to be seen from the river? Good. What else? One more thing that you're going to steal from this. Yes. Oh, a North Arrow. That is fantastic. I think there might be a North Arrow on your map. But if not, yes, you definitely should know the direction of things. All right, that one was one more. I like it. I'm a liar. What? The sun path. That is interesting as well. That thing, but why is that important, though? Lighting good. So you need to know where the sun is. So if you're going to be proposing a coffee nook and it's not in the morning sun, would there be a question about that? There would be some conversation. All right, one more. Here, what are you going to steal from us? These are pretty. They're in their own right. They're actually artistic and they're interesting to look at. So that's why I chose them. But what, what, what do you see that you like? The legend. the legend. Good, yes. You can even start to add color. You can have a piece of trace paper or you can start to add a mere notation of what the colors are from this. What's funny to me is that the Mississippi River is yellow. No judgment. But it's also showing which way it's flowing. So that would be very interesting. Anything else? Flood zone. Flood zone. Okay, good. Yeah, so that might be important for some of your sites. Like in some of the areas that you're looking at. Where do you think, where do you anticipate it's actually on your map where the FEMA flood zones are? Good. What else? Yes. You might want to talk about it. on this one. It's, it's labeled select views. I think on the previous one there were individual discrete views. But maybe the idea of a, of a view shed and okay. kind of the limits of that view shed. So everything in between is one continuous view is a useful uh, element. No, good point. Did everybody hear that? I'm going to paraphrase this. I did the first one had very distinct views, saying, "Oh, you're going to see this element there or this element here." But this one is talking about like a, a span of view. So you've got a nice panoramic view from different places. And so those are two different types of view corridors or things that you can see through. And so that probably would be worth noting. Good. Anything else? All right. Why is this important? Is the water table good? Yep. Maybe you're going to be. Yep. So you know where the water level is in comparison to The street, good. <laughs> do you think this is, if you took one section through your river segment, do you think that's going to describe adequately the entirety of your river segment? <laughs> no. And so that's what this is showing, is that you're going to probably want to take a couple of, and they don't have to be, you know, this is, this is a final rendition, this is beautiful. But that idea of at what what are the, the types of river interfaces that are present along your segment? So up at the very top, we kind of have this, this canal with, with not a lot of access down to the river. Here you've got, or the lake, you, the second one down, you've got a nice gentle, you can actually access the water. And so you can tell in the second one, the third one down, you can see that there's stairs towards the water. And the th fourth one down, right, one, two, three, four. Again, there's steps down to the water. So there's this idea of how we, how does the river communicate to the site and the street. And that's going to be very important for a lot of what you're going to be designing in the future. And so you're going to want to be able to, and you don't have to do them alone, you're going to be going in groups, but you're probably going to want to divvy out that assignment of drawing rough sections of what the river looks like at those different spots. All right? Any other things? Any other questions about this image? Pretty self-explanatory. All right, so sometimes, this is just another thing that we want to throw, that I wanted to throw out, is that when we do uh, this analysis of, of rivers and of cities and of sites or anything, one common way is to do a SWAT. You look for the strengths. What are the strengths of the river? What's down there? 
What are the weaknesses? What? What's not working? What's bad? What? Who did that? Damn that. All right. Weaknesses? This is W. I, I got it because the colors were pretty. That was the only reason I got it. All right. So weaknesses, opportunities. What are the things that could happen? What? You know, like down there, like what could be there? What is, then we're not going to have a submarine dock. Why not? And so you're going to have to think of what are the applicable or what are the good opportunities that the place has, and then what are the threats? What has the opportunity to, to cause havoc within the system that we're setting? All right, so SWAT with the correct... You're never going to... Yes, this is the SALT. SALT, which doesn't sound very good. So SWAT sounds better. All right, so... We've got about nine more minutes. I was going to try to bring some down, but I don't think we have time to demonstrate what we're going to, what we have for you is that we have these beautiful maps. Everyone should know what segment they're in, correct? Good. So we have segment one, segment two, and segment three. And so I think the way that... And do the same thing. All right. This is what it's going to kind of look like. All right. You're going to get one map. You're getting it together. You're getting. You can use markers. You, if you have photographs, you can print off your photographs that you need to discuss and talk about what you've done. Your sketches. So this is not a pure drawing exercise. This is a pure information gathering, assimilation, creation thing. So if it needs to be a collage of different images, you can do that. If you want to use colored crayons or other things in order to, to get your point across in order to communicate with each other, then do that. As you can see, I love this over here to the right. You see they've written a little legend for that drawing. So you might have multiple drawings. You might need multiple legends. All right? Oh, I was going to say something else. What was it going to do? Oh, why are you doing this? You're doing this so as your segment is going to be ultimately talking to your master plan group. All right? I'll make this sense in one second, but I have to put this up. You're trying to distill information into, so lots and lots of information in a funnel to a single point. All right? To get your point across because after you work in your little room space on your, the segment of the river, you're going to be redivided into your master plan teams. And so together, team A, master plan team A, they're going to be stitching together all of the three segments of the river to make one giant master plan. Right? I'm going to go back to this image. Right? So like this. <coughs> you're going to need to be able to communicate what's important about your segment of the river to your master plan team, right? So you're going to need to write notes with holes. I don't know exactly what that means. Maybe it's low impact development, or maybe it's manageable covers. All right. So that's the point: is you're going to be communicating within your group and to one another. Are there any questions yet? So it's this idea that you are going to be making two different master plans for your section. This is going to be great because you might, and we want this and we hope this, you might take slightly different directions. There's going to be this idea of divergent thinking, that one group might be focused in on one aspect, and the other group might be focused in on another aspect. They're going to have different things to explore, and so we're going to have a more enriching conversation when we have these two different master plans. All right? So again, this idea of the master plan itself, it does not need to be beautiful by the end of today or even by the end of Wednesday. These are still working knowledge documents. So as you're doing it, you want to keep, you want to focus on how is this communicating? Is my line weight correct? Is, my, is it clear? Is my writing accurate? But in the sense that remember we're going to be communicating internally, so these are don't, don't treat them as the final, because they're absolutely not going to be your final product. You're going to have to be, we're going to be visiting these in terms of knowledge acquisition and building. You're going to be creating things, and then we're going to revisit them 
probably a final time later on in terms of graphic clarity and making it curvy. Okay? So don't fixate on making it beautiful today. Make it work. All right. There's a couple of things that we want to talk about. Have in the back of your mind. All right, so there's this, this typology of spaces. You were out there, you remembered it. So you can think about where are the opportunities for a Belvedere or beautiful views? Where were those really gorgeous views or those framed views um, on your site? Was it a train bridge that spanned the river that led to that beautiful willow on the other side? All right, what was it? Or where, where are those beautiful views or where can you situate? <coughs> But again, don't design the Belvedere that acts. Ask yourself as you're doing this analysis, where is the opportunity for a Belvedere? Or a jetty? Over here, where is this, this chance for a long tongue out into the river itself or into the water? Where were those happening naturally? All right, then there's this idea of the promenade. Where do you walk? And not just to walk, but the promenade is where you walk to be seen and to see others. That's the idea of a promenade, a nice large space, not just a sidewalk, but a, a, something with a little bit of heft to it where you can walk. All right, the last one is this idea of a promontory. Where are you going to be maybe a little exposed, have a little bit sense of the sublime beauty or the raw natural energy of the river? There's a couple places where it felt very rapidly and raw. But these, this idea that this is just one typology that you can start to apply to the river itself. All right, any questions about these four? Do you all know what these are? You felt them, right? And what's great about this is that it's something that you can see, but somewhere in your gut, you've been on a promenade, so you know what that feels like. You've been on a jetty, and you've seen a Belvedere. All right, so remember that these are visceral as well as visual experiences. Visceral meaning they're viscera. I've got a lot more than some of you experiences, that is, not this stuff. All right, so also think about, this is also the problem statement. So if you don't write everything down at this, at this point, don't panic. You're going to have time to be able to go back and review them. But we want you to start looking at things again in terms of the form and fabric components of your areas. All right, so where are the spaces? Clearly draw on your maps. The spaces, where are those places? Again, I'm only thinking about section three, segment three, but there were parks and there were big open spaces and there weren't that there was places where you were constricted, but a lot of it was very open in terms of the spatial you know makeup of the river walk. But how was it for segment one and two? I don't know. So you're gonna have to communicate to me, especially my group. Edges, where are those edges? It's not just the river edge, but where is the, the edge of the city? Like how does how do you get that edge? Or is it a wooded edge? Right? Nodes. Where are those places where things are other things are happening? Where was that big statue? Was that a node? You get a market? Thresholds? When do you go from one space to the next space? From one experience to the next space? Right? For me again, where were we walking under bridges? Where were we walking next to wetlands? All of those things. Views are important because they're singular. Where is that singular view? Where can you see that, that beautiful building, or that top, or that tree, or that, that, the horizon? Where is that one spot? And that's different from a view shed, which is where can you stand and get a panoramic view of either the river, the town, whatever it is that we're addressing. All right, so they're a little different, and so they're going to be marked differently. Also, we want you to start looking at what are the natural systems that you recognize, and what are the cultural systems at work. Right, so those all deserve some diagramming. This is a lot, so don't have to write it all down. But going forward, what we're looking for, why we're doing this now, is we're looking for where we can start placing some of these items, some of these things that are going to make a river walk, our river walk, more engaged and exciting and more serviceable to the community. All right, so things like food delivery, food trucks, and staging areas. You can't just have a festival. You have to have a place to put the port potties and to put the generators to, you know? Okay, sorry. CD for individuals and groups. I'm gonna say this now, we'll repeat it. Do not just put benches places. Don't just say, oh, the way to make this usable is to put benches in. Benches come after you've decided everything else. Also, if you limit yourself to placing a bench, 
then you are not thinking of how you can turn a wall into a bench or an art piece into a bench. All right? So you want a sitting area. You want the thing that people do, and then you're going to decide what it's going to look like. Does that make sense? So don't be limited by a catalog shopping design. Think about what needs to be happen and then how you're going to accomplish that. All right? Restrooms, where needed. Performance areas or platforms. Viewing platforms or decks, we saw a couple of those. Shelter and or shade. Access for the boat launch steps or ramps as needed. Vegetation, again, don't think about what was, you might not have to go to the grain of what were the, where were the individual trees unless they're beautiful and they're, and they're that, that view, but where are the clumps and groupings of trees, all right? Uh, and oh, but how are a group of trees or a grove of trees different from a single tree or from a big swath of honeysuckle, all right? Those are going to be different. All right, then threshold or gateway structures as appropriate. So we can this idea, where do we need to add thresholds? More criteria that we're looking for when you start doing your master plan. These are certain criteria for later when you select different places in order to design, you're going to be thinking about the circulation systems, opportunities for constraints for access for pedestrians, handicap, but access bicycles, shuttle vehicles, Right, so we need to think about where can all of these things happen before they need to all happen in the same place when you're, when you're looking at sites. All right, land uses, what are the neighborhoods, the facilities, the surrounding institutions, are there parks and other landmarks? The natural systems themselves are going to help tell a story of your sites. The natural um, habitat interests are potential. Topographic, meaning where are the slopes? Where are those steep slopes? Where are the cliffs? Where are the, the areas of relative easy access? And where is it going to be a little bit more challenging? Because when I was out there yesterday, my three-year-old found it much more challenging to go places that I wanted to go than he could go. All right, so you're going to have to start thinking about not just the typical user you, but how is the community going to be using this site. All right, hydrology, flooding, and river flow. So when you were out there, you probably saw where the potential of the river could be, where it normally is, and what's the normal flow rate for the river. All right, so we're going to take all of that into consideration. To help you, there are going to be several base maps in order for you to look at. Right? There are going to be 200 scale base, uh, base maps that will be pinned up in the hallway on the sixth floor. Those show a lot more detail than we you might need for your master plan and your synthesis, the things that we're asking you to do today. But if you want to make sure, if you want to see better topography, if you want to see things at a finer grain, go and reference those maps. Right, and get that information that you need. And then there will be 400 scale maps that will be provided for each section. So as you're working on your master plan, you will have a nice 400 scale map for you all to be working on. All right, which brings me to the next point. It's getting into the semester. There's only so many light tables. There might be so much room, I mean, we're kind of competing a little bit with each other for space, and there's lots of us, and we're not going to be, you can't just be at your desk for this project, for this point, in your own little bubble, thinking just about yourself. You're going to have to work with other people. We're going to be working, you're going to be working around a single base map for your group. And so this is just a reminder, let's be nice, let's keep being polite, keep doing the good things that we've been seeing happen in the studio, and... Okay, so I can think of how I can be a little bit more nicer to people around me. And so, so can you. Again, I won't ask you to do something that I'm not willing to do today. All right, are there any questions at this point? Again, we as your instructors, we're hoping that you have a certain level of information to add to your maps. We're not sure, we don't know exactly what we're going to see. And so there's this flexible time of it, it, to see exactly where we're going to be in order to allow you to break off from your segment groups to go back to your master plan groups. All right, so the initial, the, the intent 
what is 2 o'clock, probably 2.30 at this point, to have an hour to get together, to get your information put again. That's where we're going to have to see where you are, and we're going to have to respond in sections to your questions and your information. Yes? Oh, you're just figuring out what was there. For your segment, yeah. yes. Yeah, so, but good question. So it's today is just amassing that data, that information that you got on site, all right? Because somebody might not have seen where that statue of McCullough was, but somebody else might have. So we want you to get all that information and we want you to distill it down. And then you're going to do a master plan to, as uh, in your sections to decide where your sites are going to be. And then you're going to start engaging with the design on site. But knowing that's out there, don't focus on it. Focus more on getting your information today on paper and then synthesizing it into a master plan, which is going to be due on Wednesday. All right? So you're getting together into segments, getting on information, then getting together as a different group to talk about your master plan. And then your master plan will be due on Wednesday, and then you'll get to start designing your site. The master plan is, is not just an inventory, that's a good question. The master plan is what you want to do. So the master plan is where you're going to be saying things like, ooh, there's no pathway here, we should make a pathway here, or we should clear out this wooded area so that we have this nice view, or we should totally cover this area because we need that view. Alright? You'll get, get some more information in session. Yes. 